Skarg Primary School, Skarg Peninsula, on the north shore of Little Loch Broom, west of Ross. We wanted to know what was under the sea. So we decided to have a look. We attempted pitch by the shore in the field below our school. down and sat in the tent where we were shown a submersible remote operated vehicle and learned how it worked. What I haven't quite worked out is how we're all going to fit inside it so that we can go out to look but we don't need to because there's a little camera here at the front so that's going to do all the seeing for us. We're going to come up the yellow cable and we're going to watch it on this television screen here. Pick forward and reverse and the camera tilts up and down, the camera focuses, the lights go on and off and the gripper opens and closes. So those are all the left hand controls, this is the right hand joystick. Whenever we see anything we write down the time and then it means that we know where it is on the video. So we write the time there which will tell you when we start and, uh, and then on, on the line we'll just write what we've seen. We also learnt how to keep a dive log. And on this little screen here I get the compass bearing which will tell me which direction I'm going in and it will also uh, tell me how deep it is. The intertidal room. The area between high and low tide. Here at the high tide line, at first sight there are little visible signs of life, yet there are thousands of living barnacles covering the surface of the rocks. A sea gooseberry, a variety of comb jellyfish, floats near the surface feeding on microscopic plankton. Toothed rack, getting its name from the saw-like teeth on its leaves, forms a thick carpet on the seabed. Knotted rack and bladder rack, usually seen lying flat when the tide is out, now floats upright due to air pockets or bladders in the branches. This small saucer-shaped medusa jellyfish propels itself through the water by contracting its body or umbrella. Battling with the current, the ROV attempts to land on the walk. The limpet, a mollusk, walks on a single foot to graze algae off the surface of the rock. It will return home to the patch clear of barnacles every time the tide goes out. Mussels are bivalve mollusks. They constantly filter the water to feed on nutrients that float past. The barnacles, 
Not mollusks, but crustaceans also collect tiny particles of food by reaching out with their fine feathery legs. All seaweeds are different varieties of algae that play an important role in cleaning the water as they also digest nutrient particles in the sea. As we reach the lower intertidal zone, the algae growth gets much denser. A kelp forest provides a perfect habitat for this shoal of wrasse as they cruise around looking for food. The kelp or laminaria forests support a vast variety of marine life. This bell-shaped medusa jellyfish snares its prey with its tiny tentacles. The kelp forest also provides vital shelter as a hiding place for more vulnerable marine species. As we leave the intertidal zone, the boot lace weed poses as a risk of fouling the ROV propellers. We are now below the line of lowest tide, descending over a rocky drop-off, heading for deeper water. And around six metres in depth, we find a sandy habitat. A seven-armed starfish walks slowly on hundreds of tube feet protruding from under its arms. Starfish are echinoderms. This little fish is difficult to identify. It may be a lesser weaver fish. The starfish has no eyes, but it can feel the ROV with its sensory tube feet, which it can also use to hold fast. The algae grows thick in the summer, making it difficult to see what is hiding beneath. It provides no camouflage for this bright cushion star. A swimming crab, feeling threatened by our approach, assumes a defense posture, making itself look as big as possible and standing stock still. The white patches on the inside of its claws add to the threatening illusion. A forest of sugar kelp, a variety of laminaria seaweed.
A sea urchin, like a starfish, is an echinoderm, holds fast with its sucker feet. Its sharp spines protect it from predators while it's grazing on a kelp leaf. In order to find its way home, the ROV must locate and follow its umbilical tether. Like driving through a blizzard, we pass a swarm of sea gooseberries. <laughs>